what better way to start your day off than with some great news and that's exactly what's happening in today's video we got a lot of great news to talk about with the baltimore ravens and some advantageous news too because there's a rule that i didn't really have a clue about when it comes to international players but the baltimore ravens are taking full advantage of and it this helps them a lot and we're going to talk about that shortly and also they are moving fast when it comes to getting these rookie deals done and we can talk about the benefits of that but then there's also something that ruffled a lot of Ravens fans feathers uh some comments that John Harbaugh made about the AFC championship game and we're going to talk about that as well team keep it clean make sure you subscribe to the channel turn your notifications on and leave a like on the video we are about 112 subscribers away from 75,000 and I appreciate y'all like I always say thank y'all for making this so much fun I really appreciate you all's time every single day thank you I love you now before we get into it uh, I got to give a special shout out to today's sponsor and that is powerhousewheels.com you can hit them up for all your rims and tires needs the link to their website is down below in the description also the link to some discount codes because you know we all love some discounts and you can use code TKIC5 to get 5% off of all orders under a thousand dollars but if you want to go big then you can use code TKIC10 to get 10% off all orders over a thousand dollars so visit powerhousewheels.com for all of your rim and tires needs now david ajabo david ajabo has had a rough start to his nfl career pretty much redshirted his rookie year and then last year he played a tiny 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 bit uh and then he ended up missing the majority of the season there was a lot of uh strange it was a weird vibe around a lot of injuries last year when it came to the baltimore ravens of course the whole thing with tyus bowser that was just awkward all year and then when for david ajabo it was awkward for a very very long time because we had heard he had some issues and whatnot and harbaugh for a while he said he had multiple injuries but didn't tell us what those injuries were until late 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 in a season where he said he had a partial uh acl tear and an ankle injury so i'm like man how you really been holding out and he didn't really end up playing much last year at all now when he has played he has been productive but that's been the thing he just hasn't played he hasn't been available so with this rule which again as a ravens fan if you've been a raven fan for a while you know they're gonna teach you some stuff about the rule that you had no idea about but with this rule uh this actually plays into the ravens favor and we're gonna talk about exactly why now Let's read the report from Jeff Zrebic. He said, Ravens were also granted an international roster exemption for outside linebacker David Ajabo. This allows Ravens to carry 91 players instead of the normal 90. Uh, each team is eligible for international roster exemption. Since Ravens have an international player on the roster, this opens up a spot for them to sign another player. Now, I like that. I like that a lot because this gives you more flexibility with uh with david ajabo reason i say that is because like we just talked about with david ajabo he's been hurt a lot he, he's been hurt a lot he's missed so much time and yeah he does have a spot on the roster but especially with the status of his injury we don't know what the status of his injury is right now i don't know if y'all some of y'all know y'all please put it in the comment section for sure but we don't know the status of his injury we don't know when he'll be back we don't know if he's ready to go right now obviously he got time september ain't for a little while but we just don't know it's so much that we don't know and since we don't know the ravens can be like all right this puts less pre less pressure on them it also puts hmm i can't say it puts less pressure on him because this actually in my opinion it puts more pressure on him especially depending on what type of player they add to the roster i mean for him there's already enough pressure on him as is because your first two years you have missed a lot of time i really see the first year he got hurt during his pro day so that was like oh man like how does something like that happen the same andrew Voorhees stuff is tough but this last year you missed the majority of the season and now they still have a dog away uh last year they brought in jadavian Clowney and they brought in uh kyle vanoy uh, they didn't get jadavian Clowney back this year but they did bring back kyle vanoy so pressure's already on you even without them adding any additions the pressure was already on you to just be back for yourself but now with adolfo away still here and then them bringing back kyle vanoy it's like oh they brought in somebody oh okay because that's competition for you direct competition and then they drafted uh, adisa isaac 
that's even more direct competition for you because that's your position. That's where you play it. That's where you were drafted to come in and be a pass rusher. And then they, of course, got undrafted rookie free agents as well. But that's a lot of pressure on David Ajabo, but a lot less pressure on the Baltimore Ravens, especially when it comes to his recovery, because this allows them to add somebody, even if they add somebody at another position. But specifically, if they add somebody as a, as a pass rusher, then it could be like, ooh, it could really make them not necessarily look at him sideways, but it could, it could make him look at them sideways. Like, man, like, hey, I'm, 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 I'm here. But we'll see how it works out. But either way, it, it benefits the Ravens like crazy because they can have yet another person in the mix, whether it's at outside linebacker, whether it's at receiver, whether it's offensive, whether it's wherever, they can have, have somebody else in the mix on the roster that, and they can add competition. And you know competition on the Baltimore Ravens roster, on any NFL roster, it makes the team that much better. So we'll see what they do with that 91st spot. But they got some decisions to make, and they got some decisions to make pretty fast. Uh, I mean, not that it's necessarily a rush for them, but it's nice to have that, uh, that flexibility. Now, um, speaking about flexibility, uh, when Ravens, when any team drafts a rookie, that rookie is obviously is going to be signed to that team, but they're not signed yet. Uh, so when it comes to camp and all that, especially oh, training camp, that's when it can get really ugly. If they're not signed yet, then they don't participate. Because if they participate and they got hurt, then it's like, man, they, they will still get some money, but it wouldn't be their normal money. But the Ravens are like, no, 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 no. We ain't trying to have none of that. We ain't trying to talk about none of that. We don't even want that to be a conversation. So they've been getting their rookie deals done fast. They got Nate Wiggins signed yesterday. And it's like, man, Ray, okay. And he was the first first-round draft pick to get his deal. Usually the Ravens, like, they, they usually get it done pretty early overall. They're not never the first, but they usually get their deals done pretty early overall get them done before training camp so you ain't gotta have all the drama but raven said you, we ain't even trying to get close to waiting until training camp to get these deals done because not only did they sign nate wiggins yesterday but they signed uh roger rose garden they signed tj tampa they signed uh nikki samak and they signed sanusi kane so that's what five out of nine they only got four picks left to sign that's it four picks left to sign so raven's is moving man they they really move they moving quick man i love it i love it so it, it's nice to get that done so it's just out of the way you ain't gotta be stressed out or nothing like that you ain't gotta worry about it or nothing like that now <laughs> with john harbaugh <laughs> john harbaugh um he had a lot of people upset with some comments that he made on the rich eisen show uh recently because Rich Eisen asked him about like the, the run pass ratio in the AFC championship game because of course that was a topic of heavy topic of conversation. Um and John Harbaugh said, Hey, that's just the way that the Chiefs they played us. He talked about how they stacked the box and we had to make more plays in the passing game. And <laughs> The numbers don't say that, John, <laughs> because it was this stat that's, that Seth Walter put out on February 6th of this year. It says, when the Chiefs had six or fewer defenders in the box, so six or fewer, six or less defenders in the box, <laughs> the Ravens ran 33 dropbacks. Those are passing plays. They ran 33 dropbacks. Three of them were scrambles. One QB design run and one RB, one running back carry. So, John Harbaugh just told a flat out lie. <laughs> the boy just got all rich eyes and podcasts is just lying. But with John Harbaugh, um, I say this, man. Uh, <laughs> there is, um, there was really, in my opinion. Nothing that he could have said in that moment with, with Rich Eisen that would have made people happy because the damage is done. There's nothing that he could have said. If he would have said, oh, yeah, man, we, we, we should have ran the ball more. We should have run the ball more in the AFC championship game. But people going to be like, well, you, you should have stepped in. You should have stepped in and told Todd Monk and, hey, told Lamar, hey, we got to run that ball more. You should have stepped in and said, 
But the damage is, is done. If he would have been like, man, I just, I, I, that's on me. I was responsible for that. I didn't call a good game. Well, he don't really call the game. Well, sometimes he'll, he'll get involved, but he let his coordinators do the calling. That's their job as coordinators. He, if he would have said that, then people going to be like, oh, yeah, you should have called a better game. They should have called a better game. That was terrible. You should have stepped in. There, there was really no winning for John Harbaugh with his answer. Unless he just came out straight up and just said, hey, it was, it was terrible. It, it was terrible. And that's all on me. That's, I just, it, it's on me as a head coach. That's on me. I mean, still, it wouldn't really been no winning. I'm sure that probably would have been an answer that most fans would have been the most satisfied with. But they probably would have been like, oh, no, we done heard that before. We want something new. Wasn't so, really, there, there was no winning for John Harbaugh in that situation but i just I, I just thought it was funny how he just he just came on there just, just said what he said it's like wait that's that's not even true but um it just goes back to what we said and, and a lot of y'all said too at the beginning of last season at the beginning of the last season said the same thing that a lot of us are saying now regular season is cool and we expect the baltimore ravens as long as they're healthy to get stuff done in a regular season as they normally do which is great, but postseason is where we want to see something new. It is, it's where we want to really see the Ravens, like, get this thing done. They obviously haven't been getting it done. Like, last year was a success. They got to the AFC Championship game, and even it was crazy. And what the, probably the most frustrating part about the AFC Championship game was that the Ravens' offense, not defense, but the Ravens' offense was not themselves at all. They didn't play their game. At all, but it was still a seven point game. They were literally in the game the entire game. They were right there in the game the whole game. And that's crazy. It was never a blowout. I mean, the way that the game was going, it felt like the score was farther apart than it was, but it wasn't. They were literally in the game the whole game and they weren't even playing the, the, the game. That's frustrating. And it just feels like it was just such a waste of a season. I know it obviously wasn't an entire waste of a season, but it's like, man, you were the best team in the league and all for nothing. So I know a lot of Ravens fans going into this year, they're looking at the team a lot differently. They're looking at the team like, hey, like, all right, what's what's it going to be? What's it going to be, Ravens? What are we going to do, Ravens? Because, again, regular season, yeah, that's cool. But playoffs, y'all got to show me something different. So we'll see what they do very, very soon. This is the beginning of May. Well, I mean, we got like four months in change before we actually see them play. But so I can't say very, very soon. We got a little while, but it won't be too long. Team, keep it clean. Make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you do not miss not a single video, not a single update, not a single thing when it comes to these Baltimore Ravens or really just the NFL in general. Leave a like on the video because it helps out the channel a ton. And also... I mean, what what you think about David Ajabo? What do you think about him overall thus far? His career trajectory to this point and where you think it's on the way to. And how you feeling about that international roster exemption? And who do you think, what type of player you think the Ravens are going to bring on to hold down that 91st spot? I love y'all. appreciate y'all. Again, do not forget to check out powerhousewheels.com and use code TKIC for all orders under 1,000 to get 5% off. And if you want to go big, you use code TKIC10 for 10% off all orders over 1,000. I love y'all. I appreciate y'all. And we out.